Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we are going to take a brief look at Hunix 15, which was just released. And uh, this is one of those major means of connecting to the internet via the Tor network. Now, of course, and some people say, once you get on the internet, there's no anonymity. And I completely disagree with that sentiment because there is a major difference between getting on the internet and searching through something through a series of proxies or VPN or a Tor network and logging into the internet, logging into an account, utilizing a username, a password, keeping your IP address, uh, in the open. There's radical differences between all of these things. So just because you browse the internet doesn't mean you have to give up every bit of your privacy. You know, just like opening my window doesn't necessarily mean that someone can see absolutely everything I do inside of the house. You know, we do have walls and other things we can do. Now, that being said, when we're talking about accessing the Tor network, uh, the easiest way to access the Tor network is to use the Tor browser bundle. And I actually don't recommend utilizing that system in most cases. Now, of course, uh, Brave Browser now integrates uh, Tor as well. But if even if you check their documentation, they say this is not necessarily the best way, mostly because of fingerprinting and things. That will basically just allow you to access the .onion sites, which you can't access from your standard web browser. Now, other ways of accessing the Tor network, how do I recommend you access it? Well, number one, if you're installing something to your hard drive, you want to use Cubes. Okay, Cubes is an excellent way of installing a completely isolated base system where you can set up entire boxes for different profiles. You have an anonymity profile, you have disposable profiles, and you can choose whether each individual box separately goes through the clear net or goes through... Uh, through the Tor network. And that's why Cubes is so good. It is, however, more of an advanced system and more complicated. Now, if you are doing something with a basic USB drive, you want to be using Tails. And uh, I really like Tails, especially they've made it very easy to install Tails and set up persistent um, volumes with your leftover space. And it's a very good system. Are there alternatives? Yes, there are. And I've actually looked at most of them and I don't see any reason to use any alternative other than Tails. Now there's, there's different pros and cons. Some people don't like that Tails has system D, but I've also yet to find any compelling reason why I shouldn't be using system D. And I know some of you will give me interesting reasons and there will be nothing compelling in there. I promise I've seen it all. Now, the, if you're doing a virtual machine, and that's what we're going to be looking at today, Hunix is what you want to use. So I would use Hunix and keep Hunix box on your system for those times you need to jump onto the Tor network really quickly without booting down your system or you know exiting everything out and going into a Cubes instance or something like that. So with that, uh, we are going to have a look at Hunix today. And this is just released, and it's actually based on the upcoming Debian 10. And as soon as the final updates are released, they will port these back into this need. And so basically Hunix, now the first thing they will tell you is this is developed by hobbyists. It is designed with uh, security and privacy in mind, but even they say it's not the absolute magic bullet because nothing is the magic bullet. As soon as you log into the Tor network and, and then log into your Google account, you've completely de-anonymized yourself. So why bother? All right. Now, of course, that all that being said, um, I, have one, uh, I have one account with one big business that I do log in to the account over the Tor network, but it, I only gets logged into the account over the Tor network for an interesting reason, which I'm not going to devolve any more in, um, information on that. So how does Hunix works? Well, it is based on Tor. So everything, the way that they do this so well, remember you don't ever really want to use Tails in a virtual machine. I've demonstrated it before in a virtual machine, but you really don't want to use Tails in it. Hunix is designed to run in a virtual machine because they set up two separate machines that interact with each other independently. And so it makes it so that the host machine can't see what your workstation is doing. Uh, because what they'll do is they'll set up a gateway machine and then a separate workstation. It's actually the same method that Cubes uses, which is what isolates everything out in Cubes. So Hunix does the same thing. It's just for a single user instead of separate individual profiles. And it's designed to run in a virtual machine rather than running inside of 
uh, inside of a separate hard drive. Uh, they isolate things. Um, this is what helps preserve your real IP address. And uh, they do have a Hunix for all of your operating systems. So of course, Hunix is, I think, part of what's built into Cubes, uh, which is how Cubes works. Um, and in my opinion, if you're needing something installed to your hard drive, Cubes is absolutely the way to go. Uh, if you're using Mac, Linux, or Windows, you can download the corresponding. So this is quite a bit different of a download than most of the other distributions are because you're not downloading an ISO. In this case, you're actually downloading a VirtualBox machine image. So what you're going to do is uh, grab your specific one. So in my case here, I'm downloading the Linux box. And then um, this one here, I'm grabbing the XFCE, which is the basic default. You can also grab it with the CLI. And with the CLI, you know, you can install your own desktops, whatever you want to do with it. This is, of course, based on Debian. So keep that in mind. All right, so once you download this, um, then what you're going to do is you're going to import it. So on your virtual machine, you are going to go into your import menu, and I will go ahead and show you what that looks like here. So just jumping on over to my desktop view, um, you want to come into your file menu and you have import appliance. Now when you import the appliance, it's actually going to give you two separate um, virtual machines here. One of these is the gateway, which attaches to Tor, and the other is the workstation where you actually get your work done. And of course, they have all of this information right here on the website, so you can easily follow along. So download it, whether you're downloading the Mac, the Linux, the Windows version, and then you import it into your virtual machine. And then the first thing you're going to do is start the Hunix gateway. And I like to wait until the gateway finishes starting up. It does all of its little thing. And then what we're going to do from there is boot up the workstation. Remember, the gateway just accesses the Tor network. The workstation actually forts that information over. And then you just go ahead and change your... Uh, your uh, screen size there. Now, the first time you log in, you are going to want to know um, that the they have a default username and password, and you can change those. So a few warnings they give you, if you don't know what metadata or man-in-the-middle attack is, if you think nobody can eavesdrop in your communication, if you have no idea how Hunix works, then you're going to want to read the information here. And I definitely encourage you to read all that because it is important information. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, look at the individual machines. Now this one is the gateway and they are actually pretty much, they look identical. So uh, this guy over here is the gateway. This guy over here is the workstation. Now if you attempt to do anything on the gateway, so if you attempt to go here, they will say that um, this does not actually uh, link through the gateway for security reasons and it tells you to browse uh, under uh, the workstation instead. So if you look at what's in here, uh, they just have the very basic bare minimums, nothing in here. So of course we have things to reload Tor, we have some firewall tools, uh, other stuff like this that you can actually use. So this one here is really built out to really double check your network and make sure everything's good. Nothing else is going to be used for that. We will spend the rest of our time here looking at this guy here. And so I've already actually went ahead and told it to use the full screen screen resolution. You might need to change that yourself. So now when I come in here and I click my web browser icon, we can see that uh, we are now using the Tor browser bundle. Here is our Tor. We can check for updates. We can switch to a new identity. Uh, let's see if there's any add-ons installed on this guy. So we have no script. I don't think no script is enabled. Um, at least I'm not sure if it's turned on. Let me, let me go ahead and customize this guy here. There we are. Uh, there's HTTPS everywhere. Here's no script. We're just going to move no script up here. All right. And so looking over here, you can see that um, there's nothing to block in this case. So I guess it is, it is set up. We have HTTPS everywhere installed as well. So that's, that's good for extra security. Let's go ahead and check the, uh, let's do a Tor check. 
see how this guy is working. So DuckDuckGo is the default uh, search engine here. And I think the DuckDuckGo is generally the default search engine because it works whether you are on uh, the regular internet or whether you are on um, on the uh, Tor network or not. And actually I tested this before I started and everything was running a lot faster. So I'm wondering if we are having an issue. It looks like our Tor network is slowed down. So if you are unfamiliar with the Tor network, yes, it is quite a bit slower. Um, don't let that deter you from using it. A lot of times it's slower because it's going to be uh, jumping back and forth. Let's go ahead and try again. Uh, let's do a tour check. So sometimes what happens is you get on a, a tour node that dies. So if that's the case, just come up here, hit this onion and hit a new identity. Now that will close all of your tabs and everything. Um, so just be aware of that. So here it's telling us my IP address appears to be this, which I can confirm is not my IP address. Our JavaScript is enabled by default, but we are running no script here. Um, so if you were to, to land on a page that has a lot of scripts, let's see if it actually blocks. So let's go to google.com, which I would highly recommend not doing, but I just want to see if it's blocking anything or not. So here you can see it is, um, uh, let's see what it's doing here. So it actually thinks we are from, uh, somewhere over in Germany, it looks like, uh, here's default. All right, let's search for something, see what happens. So I, it's unclear to me. I don't use NoScript enough to tell me. That looks like it is. So this is actually not actually blocking anything. So they're letting Google through for some reason. Um, so that's actually kind of uh, concerning to me. Um, so what we might want to just do is go ahead and block scripts everywhere. Um, like I said, I don't use NoScript enough. What I'm actually doing when I'm accessing this is I just go into the About Config and I just disable JavaScript. That's what I do. Um, come in over here and just do a JavaScript and disable JavaScript. And now if I come back over here, let's go ahead and do a Tor check again and it will tell us at the bottom of the page so now it's redirecting to a non-JavaScript system. So now it's telling me here's my IP address, and you can see that now JavaScript is disabled. All right. So um, that way we have uh, we have JavaScript disabled. I don't rely on NoScript to do that. Basically, I don't use browser plugins, guys. I, I just don't. Um, I think that over-reliance on browser plugins leads to a lot of vulnerabilities, and so I don't use them. Um, very few exceptions to that. All right, other tools that we have built in. There's actually a lot in here. So this is a basic XFCE theme. It's not necessarily pretty or elegant. It's more based on functionality. That's quite okay. Under our accessories, uh, we have uh, Fire Jail configuration, GNU Privacy Assistant. We have KeePass XC built in, um, Archive uh, Manager. We have Thunar, Bulk Renaming Files. Really nothing under graphics, under your internet. Uh, we have chat support for IRC, uh, contribute to Hunex, uh, mailing lists, hex chat, uh, onion share, uh, onion share. Actually, I, one of the projects that I used to work with, uh, we were, we did a lot of work with activists. And so we had to know how to share files anonymously and onion share was the most recommended way to do that. So this will basically allow you to share a file with somebody. It has a limited lifespan and a limited accessibility. So uh, you can click on this and send a file to somebody. Uh, so it's going to connect to the Tor network. Uh oh, something's wrong. Let's see. No such file or directory. And I have to look into what's going on with that. Um, but when you actually get into here, um, it's going to give you a dialog box to upload a file. And then you get a single link. You share that with the person. They can download that link one time and then it, it goes away. Um, I'm not sure why that's not working. That should be working just fine here. Um, and here's our Tor browser. Let's just see what this is doing. So this is the same thing we booted up before. Let me see if maybe the Tor got kicked off or something. So there's definitely something wrong with the configuration of that. I'll, I'll look into that maybe. And uh, if I have enough people ask, I'll, I'll um, do another video on fixing that. All right. Um, here's local network browser, Hunix forums. 
uh, feature blogs. All right, multimedia, we have VLC, and then under our settings and our system, these are just gonna be your basic tools. So on the surface, one of the downsides that it has is it really doesn't have a lot of applications built in for a lot of custom features. This is one of the things that really sets this apart from Tails. Uh, Tails literally gives you a complete workstation that has literally any type of software that you need for any type of function because Tails generally discourages you from installing extra software because any type of software that you install could potentially open a security hole. This doesn't do that, so if I needed to do um, you know, editing with GIMP or something, I'd have to install GIMP, which you know wouldn't be too bad to do. I don't think there's a software manager in here. Is there? Let's see if Synaptic is in here. Uh, no, so we would just have to do everything through the terminal, so... Uh, let's do sudo apt install gimp. Uh, oh, what was the default username on this? Uh, I think it's user and is it change me? Is that what it was? Yes, it was. All right. Okay. So now it's actually going through. Um, you can see it's grabbing stuff. Oh, that's exciting. The, uh, Debian servers are on AWS. I don't know if that creeps you out or not, but <laughs> I have stuff on AWS too. I don't know. All right. Um, so you can see one of the downsides here is that it's not having all of the system tools that you're going to need out of the box. You will have to install extra software um, to get things working, which could potentially open up a security hole. That's where Tails is a little bit better. Uh, for me, I wouldn't be using this to do a lot of that type of work anyway. This is something I just have on my machine so I can boot into it access something on tour really quick and then shut her back down you know maybe I'm, maybe I have some weird foot pain and I want to go search for it on the internet without the whole internet tracking me around saying this guy looked for foot pain for the next five months um, but anyway uh, that is Hunix uh, it is a very nice system um, I think that they do have a lot going for it uh, and not sure what's going on with that onion chair thing I'll look into that a little bit here uh, when I'm not under the stress of a camera and see what the issue is uh, so with that being said, uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Is this something you want to look at? Uh, let me know in the comments down below.